analysis. Stochastic gradient descent has emerged as one of the most used training algorithms for deep neural networks. Despite its simplicity, F3D performs well empirically across a variety of applications. Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna be reading a scientific paper and also taking notes about it. Um, the paper I've chosen for this is Improving Generalization Performance by Switching from Atom to SGD. Um, these are the two authors. Um, I think down here, yeah, it says they're from Salesforce Research. The paper itself is a bit older, you can see here on the site, it's from December 2017, but I've chosen it because the abstract seemed approachable and there was a more recent paper about a similar topic, about generalization between Adam and SGD, and uh, it was very hard to understand. And don't worry if you don't understand anything, I'm just gonna be doing some reading and writing, and it will be a bit of computer science and math themed, because this is about deep learning, which is a subfield of AI, and yeah, specifically we're talking about how to train neural networks and how to improve their generalization performance, like it says in the title. So, let's just get right into it. Alright, so it says, despite superior training outcomes, adaptive optimization methods such as Adam, Adagrad, or RMS prop have been found to generalize poorly compared to stochastic gradient descent. These methods tend to perform well in the initial portion of training, but are outperformed by SGD in later stages of training. We investigate a hybrid strategy that begins training with an adaptive method and switches to SGD when appropriate. Concretely, we propose SWATS, a simple strategy which switches from ADAM to SGD when a triggering condition is satisfied. The condition we propose relates to the projection of ADAM steps on the gradient subspace. By design, the monitoring process for this condition adds very little overhead does not increase the number of parameters in the optimizer. Okay, so switches to SGD. Something about a triggering condition. We report experiments in several standard benchmarks, such as ResNet, SENet, DenseNet, and PyramidNet for the CIFA 10 and CIFA 100 datasets, ResNet on the tiny ImageNet dataset, and language modeling with recurrent networks on the PDB and WD2 datasets. The results show that our strategy is capable of closing the generalization gap between SGD and Adam on a majority of the tasks. Let's take some notes here. Okay. So they're good at the start, but not so good at the end. And also, SGD generalized. Let's call it switching algorithm. Okay, now what else do they say? Stochastic 
gradient descent has emerged as one of the most used training algorithms for deep neural networks. Despite its simplicity, F3D performs well empirically across a variety of applications, but also has strong theoretical foundations. This includes, but is not limited to, guarantees of setup point avoidance. Oh, that's interesting. Let me... Let me mark this so I can read it later. Improved generalization and interpretations of Bayesian inference. Training neural networks is equivalent to solving the following non-convex optimization problem, where f is a loss function. to the weights of the neural network. Of f of w, if f is a loss function. And then SGD why the gradient has a hat, but okay. Times the gradient of the loss function at this previous weight. Okay. And it then says WK is the kth iterate and alpha K is the step size sequence, also called the learning rate. And this term denotes the gradient computed at WK. Still don't know why it has a hand, but okay. A variant of SGD, SGDM, that uses the inertia of the iterates to accelerate the training process has also found to be successful in practice. The iterations of SGDM can be described as follows. Okay, so we also have So we keep a bit of the previous update and add it to, into our new update. Like if I write this like this, it's a bit confusing. And that's better. Plus the gradient. Multiply this. Alpha k. 
exactly the same as this term. We just have this additional term. also makes the process of tuning the learning rate alpha circumstantially laborious. That's interesting, okay. I haven't thought of it, of it in that way before. To correct for these shortcomings, several adaptive methods have been proposed which diagonally scale the gradient via estimates of the function's curvature. So the adaptive method diagonally scale the gradient. Examples of such methods include Adam, Adagrad, and RMS prop. These methods can be interpreted as methods that use a vector of learning rate one for each parameter that I adapted as the training algorithm progresses. This is in contrast to SGD and SGDM, which use a scalar learning rate uniformly for all parameters. Anagrid takes steps of the form wk equals wk minus 1 minus alpha k minus 1 times the gradient but divided by the scaling parameter an epsilon that's probably just there. So we don't divide by zero. And this V is calculated by building a sum over all the gradient Let's make 
weirdly. I thought this was the jade entry but these are time entrants so we we remember The sum in this V K minus one. That's what this does. Okay. So it's the introduction of the adaptive methods. Then RMS prop uses the same update rule, but instead of accumulating VK in a monotonically increasing fashion uses an RMS-based approximation instead. In both Hanagrad and RMS prop, the accumulator V is initialized to zero. Okay, so let's... this is called... the accumulator. Um, owing to the fact that VK is monotonically increasing, each dimension for adegrad, the scaling factor for the gradient monotonically decreases, leading to slow progress. RMS prop corrects for this behavior by employing an average scale instead of a cumulative scale. However, because V is initialized to zero, the initial updates tend to be noisy. Given that the scaling estimate biased by its initialization. This behavior is rectified in Adam by employing a bias correction. Further, it uses an exponential moving average with a step in lieu of the gradient. Mathematically, the Adam update equation can be represented as follows. Normally. Okay. Avoid initial noisiness. Is that how you write this? Maybe not. And looks wrong. Even with an E. Is this even a word? I don't know. Okay. Whatever. To avoid initial noisiness. So using our learning rate. And take the square root of one minus beta two to the power of k. And we divide by one minus beta one to the power of k. We also take the momentum parameter and divide it by this accumulator. Again, plus epsilon because of the division by zero. So 
so the momentum is updated with the better one. So we do the same thing as above, but for M and K. squared, the other is not. And also, we have this additional parameter here. Okay. Atom has been used in many applications owing to its competitive performance and its ability to work well despite minimal tuning. Recent work, however, highlights the possible inability of adaptive methods to perform on par with SGD when measured by their ability to regeneralize. That also seems like an interesting paper, so I'm going to highlight that one. Furthermore, the authors also show that for even simple quadratic Adaptive methods can find solutions that can be order of magnitudes worse than generalization than those found by SGD. Sounds pretty drastic. Indeed, for several state of the art results in language modeling and computer vision, the optimizer of choice is SGD. Interestingly, however, in these and other instances, at an outperforms SGD in both training and generalization metrics in the initial portion of the training, but then the performance stagnates. This motivates the investigation of a strategy that combines the benefits of Adam good performance with default hyperparameters and fast initial progress and the generalization properties of SGD. Outperforms in the initial portion of the training. Given the insights of Wilson et al. in 2017, which suggests that a lack of generalization performance of adaptive methods stems from the non uniform scaling of the gradient. A natural hybrid strategy would begin the training process with Adam and switch to SGD when appropriate. To investigate this further, we propose SWOTS, a simple strategy that combines the best of both worlds by switching from Adam to SGD. choice of not adding additional hyperparameters is deliberate since it allows for fair comparison between Adam and SWATS. Our experiments on several architectures and datasets suggest that such a strategy is indeed effective. Several attempts have been made at improving the convergence and generalization performance of Adam. Closest to our pro proposed approaches in Zhang et al. 2017, in which the authors propose ND Adam, a variant of Adam which preserves the gradient direction, 
by a nested optimization procedure. This, however, introduces an additional hyperparameter, along with the alpha, beta 1, beta 2, used in Adam. Further, empirically, this adaptation sacrifices the rapid initial progress typically observed for Adam. In 2018, the authors investigate Adam and describe the poor generalization performance to training issues arising from the non-monotonic nature of the steps. The authors propose a variant of Adam called MAMS grid, which monotonically reduces the step sizes and possesses theoretical convergence guarantees. Despite these guarantees, we empirically found the generalization performance of AMS grid to be similar to that of Adam on problems where a generalization gap exists between Adam and SGD. We note that in the context of the hypothesis of Wilson et al., all of the aforementioned methods would still yield poor generalizations, given that the scaling of the gradient is non-uniform. The idea of switching from an adaptive method to SGD is not novel and has been explored previously in the context of machine translation. And image net training. Wu et al. 2016 used such a mixed strategy for training and tuned both the switchover point and the learning rate for SGD after the switch. Akiba et al use a similar strategy but use a convex combination of RMS prop and SGD steps, both contribution and learning rates are tuned. In our strategy, the switchover point and the SGD learning rate are both learned as part of the training process. We monitor a projection of the atom step on the gradient subspace and use its exponential average as an estimate for the SGD learning rate after the switchover. Further, the switchover is triggered when no change in this monitored quantity is detected. We describe this strategy in detail in section 2. In section 3, we describe our experiments comparing Adam, SGD and SWOTS and a host of benchmark problems. Finally, in section 4, we present ideas for future research and concluding remarks. We conclude this section by empathizing the goal of this work is less to propose a new training algorithm, but rather to empirically investigate the viability of hybrid training for improving generalization. I think I stopped the video at this point because we're already roughly half an hour in and the second chapter would be in over two full pages so I might do part two of this but for now this is gonna be it I hope you liked listening to a bit of research computer science language and thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!